resume for yourself. You try to write all the major accomplishments that you've had in your lifetime. So if Avram were writing a resume for himself, he would say that he jumped into the Kipshana Esh for Hashem, that he left his birthplace for Hashem, that he passed the Tanis Yonot, and that would show us why he's such a great candidate for being one of our Avot. When it comes to Yitzchak, we don't really see anything so special about him. He has six major points in his life. When he was born, when Avram took him up to the Akedah, then he gets married to Rivka, then he goes down to he goes to Eretz HaPlishtim, then he gives a bracha to Yaakov and Esav, and then he dies. And none of these show anything so special about him. The Akedah, that was, that was Avraham's doing, that wasn't um, Yitzchak. Then he, then he gets married to Rivka, that was Eliezer finding him the wife. Then he goes to Eretz HaPlishtim, and the Pasuk tells us that he built the wells, exactly the same wells that Avram built, and he even, the Pasuk says, um, he called them um, the same exact names that Avram says, calls them. So what's so special about Yitzchak? What makes him so original? When Hashem tells Avram to take Yitzchak to do the Akedah, Hashem says, Kach na et bincha. So what's the word na? Rashi says it means please, as in Hashem says, please, ful- p- please pass this last test, because if you don't pass this last test, the other nine nisyonot that you passed will be for nothing. Why? Because if you don't show Yitzchak the true emunah that you have in Hashem, if you don't instill it in his, in his mind, for him to pass on to future generations, then all the nine Yisyonot that you already did are, are going to be meaningless. They're not going to have any any sort of weight for the future generations. If Yitzchak, if Yitzchak knows that you have such emunah, then he's going to pass it on to the future generations, and that's what's going to make um, Kla Yisrael believe in Hashem. So the point is that Aram has to pass on the passion, and Yitzchak has to follow Abraham. If Yitzchak were to do his own thing and have his own ideas and be his own leader, then anything that Avram stood for would be done. But what makes Yitzchak so special, his great Mida, was that he pushed aside any of his own pride in order to follow Avram's footsteps. And we see this further in where, um, where it says that Yitzchak and Rivka were praying for a child, and it says that Hashem answered Yitzchak's prayer. So Rashi says, why does it say that Hashem answered Lo? Why does it say that Hashem answered Yitzchak? Why not Rivka? So Rashi says, because Hashem is going to answer the prayers of a tzaddik ben tzaddik before a tzaddik ben rasha. You would think that Hashem would answer the prayers of someone who stood out among a lot of bad, uh, people who were doing bad things and that that person did the right thing. But here Rashi is saying that it, it, sometimes it's hard to stand up for for what everybody else is doing. Sometimes you want to be original. You want to have your own ideas. But like Yitzchak, you have to separate your own ideas from what you know you have to do. So sometimes it's harder to follow what you're taught. But in this case, Yitzchak said that all, set all his egos aside and he listened to, to Abraham. And um, he realized that now was the time to follow, not to lead. And we have to learn from Yitzchak that things can go right even when they're not according exactly to your plan. And we have to realize that there are times for us to lead, but we have to know when there are time, when it's the time for us to just follow what we're taught and follow in the right ways.